When it comes to my training, I care about two things. I want to be fit enough to have adventures, and I also want to take the right actions now to increase my chances of having a healthy later life. And it just so happens, by happy coincidence, sometimes the two things are exactly the same. As runners, we get that with our zone two training, our strength training, and then what we're gonna talk about today is our VO2 max training. Your VO2 max is a good biomarker that tells you how fit you are, but it's also a good predictor of how healthy you're gonna be in later life. It can predict your health span, and that's the time in which you're functional in your life. And the great news is your VO2 max is trainable with the right stimulus, and that's what we'll go through today. Your VO2 max is the rate at which you can utilize oxygen. So it is literally the amount of oxygen in your blood. And we label it with the amount of oxygen you can process per kilogram of body weight per minute. So if you are able to process 35 mil per kilogram per minute, we would say you have a VO2 max of 35. To find out your VO2 max, the gold standard is in a lab. They put a tight mask on you and that measures the oxygen and carbon dioxide coming in and out your breath. A lab technician is taking a pinprick of blood every three minutes as they ramp up the speed on a treadmill and go to absolute maximum effort. It is miserable. I have done one. I didn't make a video about it because I filmed the whole thing in time lapse mode and I'm a complete idiot. But what I found out during that day that was interesting was at the time my Garmin watch was telling me my VO2 max was 56. The lab told me my VO2 max was 54. So there was a difference, but not a huge difference. So if you don't want to go to a lab and spend some money on it, your watch, a good sports watch, is going to be pretty much good enough. Your watch figures it out by guessing, looking at the data of your heart rate, the speed at which you're running, and then just comparing that to big pools of data. My one recommendation is to wear a heart rate monitor because they are more accurate. And I've personally found that my watch will give me a new VO2 max prediction after I've done some hard efforts for about 20 to 30 minutes. So something like a 5k race or a park run, that's when I get a new VO2 max prediction. I don't get them when I just go out for a zone two base run. Your VO2 max is trainable. And to show you how, we need to go for a run. And while I'm warming up, I'm gonna tell you why VO2 max matters. VO2 max is a fun metric to pay attention to as a runner. The higher the number, the fitter you are, but it is also a very good predictor of how fit you are likely to be in later life. VO2 max declines at a predictable rate, so we can reverse engineer where we need to be at a given age so that we can aim to be a fit and healthy 90 year old. VO2 max levels correlate with certain functions. So for example, a VO2 max of 35 would be the sort of fitness you would need to run a 10 minute mile or to run up the stairs quickly. If this VO2 max of 35 is what the average 35 year old has, but only the top 5% of 75 year olds have it. If we take that average 35 year old with an average lifestyle and they continue their average lifestyle to the age of 75, they're more likely to have a VO2 max in the low 20s. And this is the sort of fitness that would make walking up even the slightest incline an effort. I don't want to be that 75 year old. Okay, I've done my 15 minute warm up in zone two. I've set that on my Garmin to finish a button release, which I'll press in a second. Everything else is pre-programmed. I'm doing four minutes on hard and four minutes off, which will be a walk slow jog. The four minutes hard, it takes a bit of trial and error, but what you're really trying to achieve is that each of the four hard sessions, each of the hard four, four minutes, is done at the same pace. You're not trying to rush out and then have to slow down. You're trying to go out hard, but consistent. And number four should be about as fast as number three. During my warm up, I was looking for a nice flat bit where I can make it easier to be consistent. I wasn't intending to run here today, but I had to drop my daughter off and dad life. You have to kind of squeeze these runs in. So uh, I found a nice place to run and let's get into it. So this is just a bit faster than a 5K pace. Okay, first four minutes done. The goal is to try and get some nose breathing in as quickly as possible. Try and get my heart rate all the way back down. That's how this stuff works, all the way back down. Hit the next one hard. This isn't the best place to run because it's got some awkward undulations. Then suddenly you're running into thick grass but it'll do. Rather than pay attention to heart rate, I'm using RPE, relative perceived exertion. So that's basically the subjective measure, how hard do I think I'm working? 
So you need to figure this out for you. It's different for you. Your subjective experience will be different, but for me, I'm calling this, what am I calling it? 8.6 is what I'm calling this. 10 out of 10 is a six second sprint. Nine, it's like 400 meters. 8.6, I can sustain for four minutes. That's where I'm at, RPE. 30 seconds left in my recovery and my heart rate's just got below 90. So it's good, good walking recovery. And focus, ready for the next one. 8.6 RPE, gonna hit it hard. Just finished number two and running through the forest was so much fun. Terrible for consistency, but we gotta run for our mental health too. And this is good for the mental health. I've got this bottle topped up with tailwind, so a bit of electrolytes and easy to digest carbs. And uh, I think that's good for higher output workouts. Oh, it's horrible. These long rests are good. At the end of number three, that was disgusting. Number four is going to be disgusting, but I'm three minutes into my recovery and I feel completely fine again. That's the point of this long recovery. Get you ready for the next one. And thankfully, my final one is exactly the one that I did first, which was all uphill. So now it's all going to be downhill, so I'm going to fly and it's going to be fun. I love flying downhill. <sighs> Number four done. Little walk. Gonna do a light 10 minute cool down and then debrief. So you get the idea. Four minutes on, four minutes off. For me, as someone who's an ultra runner, I really should have been doing six repeats of that today, but I didn't have time, dad life. But you see how a shortish workout can actually be really effective anyway. And we only need to do one of those once a week. So the dose makes the medicine, once a week is enough. So not too much intensity. And I'm gonna do a bit more cooling down and call it a day. Damn it. It turns out I am doing five repetitions because I didn't realize I'm late to pick up my daughter. Damn it. And it's all uphill. Oh my God. This is not the cool down you should do. After VO2 max, unless you're doing more VO2 max, which I wasn't. Dad life, damn it. Dada. I got four minutes late. 